Hello, San Jose. I've missed you all, and I'm so honored to be back here in the tank tonight. Fun fact, this is the first time I've ever had the needed ticket to get into a game, so. First, I'd like to thank everyone here tonight. Thank you to the San Jose Sharks and to my wife, who've been working tirelessly this weekend to make everything go so smoothly, and it has. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge a couple people who are no longer with us, but have had an impact on my career. Brian Marchment was a teammate of mine for many years. But during my first shift in NHL, I had to avoid one of his iconic hits. Nothing says, welcome to the league, like mush zeroing in on you <laughs> during your first game. He ended up being instrumental in getting my wife to agree to go on a date with me, and I'll forever be grateful to him for that. One of the biggest influences on my career was Don Baisley. He was not just my agent, but my confidant, a friend and a trusted advisor. His advice, not just in hockey life, but my personal life, is something I will carry on with me for the rest of my days. Both these men are truly missed here tonight. I was just three years old when my dad first took me to skate at the local rink in Aneroid. And skating has brought me a happiness down in my soul. The smell of the rink, the laughs with my teammates, the competition, the thrill of victory, and even the sorrow of defeat that would fuel me to try and get better and stronger. Soon I was skating every chance I had on the frozen dugout our family, on the family farm. I idolized Mary Lemieux and the Pittsburgh Penguins, so I would pretend I'd be him winning Stanley Cups. Right there, during those brutal Saskatchewan winters, my dream was born. Those core memories, which centered on hockey and family, make up who I am. They are still the most important things in my life. My dream was to play in the NHL. Never could I have imagined having the honor of my jersey hanging above the ice. Making it to the NHL takes years of dedication, sacrifice, and hard work. Not just from the player, but the player's family and friends. There are so many people here tonight that have done just that for me. I love you too. <laughs> Some of my best, friend, team, best friends and teammates from Junior in Seattle and friends from Saskatchewan are here tonight. We all have families of our own now, and our kids play the sport we love so much. It comes full circle. That includes one of my best friends, Tony Mohagan. Tony and I met when I, we were 14, 15 years old. He's been a rock to me, not just for me, but for my family. Quick story about Tony. During the playoffs one year, my wife was pregnant and very, very sick. Uh, women are incredible, by the way. <laughs> I, I was no use to her and our boys because, of course, playoffs. So, <laughs> Tony took time off work as a firefighter in Edmonton 
flew down, played Mr. Mom until playoffs were over. Taking our boys to school, to the park, made meals, grocery shopped, and cleaned the house. I don't think I've ever made my wife as happy as Tony did. <laughs> Tony also kept me accountable when I, when I was done playing. Showing up at my door to support me and even making fun of me until I got my teeth fixed. <laughs> I could talk about all my friends here, but there's a Sharks game that needs to be played tonight. So thank you for being here, boys. I appreciate it. I was fortunate to play with some incredible men, many of whom you see here tonight. Guys like Mike Ricci, Adam Graves, <laughs> Kelly Rudy, Mike Greer, Marco Sturm, Owen Nolan, Scotty Hannon, Sean Hines, who now coaches my, son, my oldest son, Landon Marlowe. I don't know why I said the last name, my bad. <laughs> Joe Thornton and Rob Blake and many others. Thank you all for being here. Each of you and those who couldn't be here tonight have made an impact on me both on the ice and in my personal life. I'm honored that you are all here tonight. <laughs> to all my teammates during my career, thank you for being a part of my dream come true. I am beyond privileged to have been a part of so many great locker rooms and amazing teams. For all the toughness and fighting and competition that is hockey, it is also defined by a brotherhood that is a highlight of my lifetime on skates. In 1997, my hard work and dedication finally paid off. The night before the draft, Dean Lombardi, the Sharks GM at the time, was complimentary, but said, well, if we don't trade, it, trade our pick, we'll take you at number two. <laughs> It wasn't until I heard my name that I knew I was heading to California. Looking back now, <laughs> looking back now, it seems like a dream. All those hours at the rink, in the gym, schoolwork on bus rides, bumps and bruises along the way to this very moment. Before that summer, I couldn't have told you where San Jose was. <laughs> I knew it was in California. It was a very big state. Uh, it didn't matter because I knew that there was a newer NHL team there and they wanted me. I was just 17 when I moved to San Jose. I was far away from my support system, my family and friends. I'll forever be thankful to the Rudy family for taking me in, showing me that fulfilling hockey career and family life are possible. That rookie season will always stand out because it was the realization of my dream but Kelly and Donna and their daughters treated me like a member of their own family. Kelly even took me to make my big first purchase, a new car. <laughs> he talked me out of the practical SUV I had been eyeing and convinced me that I needed a Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He even haggled and got me a great deal. <laughs> when the season was over, Kelly asked for just one thing. To do the same thing for another young kid someday. Six years later, my wife and I just did just that. Thank you. During a road trip in 2005, I was told a trade had been made. Some guy named Joe Thornton. I had known Jumbo from playing with him at the U18 Pacific Cup and some world championships. We were drafted together, and now he was my teammate, and I was praying my line mate. <laughs> I got the benefit from him on the ice, but mostly a benefit from his optimism and being a great guy. He's become much more than just a teammate, but a friend I hope to have for life. Thanks for all those amazing passes, Jumbo. <laughs> amazing. One of the questions I am asked most often, what are, what are the most memorable moments of my career? Trying to pick a favorite is near impossible when there are more than two decades to choose from, but there are a few that will always stand out to me. There's my first game, my first goal against Nikolai Habibulin. The first time in the playoffs or winning the first playoff series or the 2016 Stanley Cup Finals. Even simple moments like a great comeback in a game stick with me today. Scoring my 500th goal in Vancouver stands out because of the way my teammates so genuinely ecstatic for me. Their reactions made that moment a thousand times better. Winning an Olympic gold in Vancouver will stay with me all my days too. I don't know that I truly have a favorite moment. Because I was living my dream, my dream every day. And I got to do the, the majority of that right here in San Jose. My wife. My wife and children's hometown and a place I love. Another question is, what's it like to skate out of the shark head? <laughs> it's pretty damn incredible. The atmosphere in this building is second to none, especially during playoffs. I've watched this town go from a rookie hockey city to a full-fledged hockey town. The city I couldn't find on a map has become one of the best rinks to play in. The sounds of the goal horn going off will forever be music to my ears. Thank you for sharing your energy with me for so long. It's truly appreciated.
<laughs> Walking into the next chapter hasn't always been easy, as I have lived and breathed hockey for 40 years. Like most professional athletes, I wish I could play forever, but it came time for me to be grateful for the career I had and to make room for the next generation and make their own dreams come true. However, I did not get here by myself. My parents, Dennis and Jeanette, are the ones who supported me from the very beginning and are the reason I, I'm who I am. and why I have the work ethic I do. Even after more than 1,700 NHL games, I could always count on a call from my mom saying she had watched the game. <laughs> mom and Dad, thank you for the support and love and all the hours at the rink and in the car, warming up my frozen feet and for being my safe place. I would not be, not be here, or sorry, where I am today without the two of you. I love you. While mom and dad were driving me all over, my brother and sister, Richard and Denise, had to pick up the chores on the farm. <laughs> they did it without complaining. Well, at least not to me anyways. So. <laughs> Denise, your belief and incredible support helped me give me confidence that I could make the NHL. I knew you wanted my dreams to come true. Richard, thank you for making me tough. Without getting beat up by you, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know if I'd have the pain tolerance I have today if it wasn't for you. <laughs> I'm proud to call you two friends and some of the people that I can trust and confide in today. Thank you for doing my chores when I was gone for hockey and when I would hide and shoot pucks in a barn just to get out of the chores. <laughs> Love you too. My coaches throughout the years read like a who's who of hockey. Daryl Sauter taught me so, some tough love for love early in the, my career. Old school hockey those first few years. It made me driven to work even harder. Next was Ron Wilson, who showed trust in my ability to lead the team. Todd McClellan gave me a sort of stake in the team where I was entrusted to help make decisions with the core group, and he brought our team to the next level. Pete DeBoer took us to the finals and always supported me and showed me faith in my abilities. I got to play for Mike Babcock, while in Toronto and for Team Canada. He had always shown a confidence in my career, which gave me belief in myself, and I'm so thankful for that. I also had the opportunity to play for Mike Sullivan in Pittsburgh and Bob Boogner. Thank you to each and one of you for these of these men because they've each taught me some, something special new about the game. I've always been fortunate to work with an amazing cast of assistant coaches and one that stands out is Jay Woodcroft. Woody would always take that extra time with us he invested in us as a team and as our coach. 
He wanted to get better with us, and I'm proud to call him a friend today. Mike Ricci has always been there for me as a teammate. As a teammate, a friend, an assistant coach, thank you, Reach. <laughs> Dean Lombardi, thank you for drafting me to this city. Your decision in June of 1997 has given me this dream life. Tim Burke, thank you for passing along my name and during the scouting process. And I can't stress this one enough. Thank you to people of San Jose, the Bay Area. <laughs> the Bay Area and the Sharks franchise. I had big dreams and you showed faith in me from day one. I hope, I hope that I have left the history that you and the city can be proud of. There are too many people to thank, but I need to quickly name a few. Sharks GM, Mike Greer. Sharks owner, Hassel Plotner. Doug Wilson, Jonathan Becker, Joe Will, and a couple of special teammates, Brent Birds and Joe Pavelski. Our trainers, Mike Aldrich, Ray Tufts, Wes Howard, Mikey Potenza, Roy Sneesby, Arnufo Aguirre, and Vinny Ferriolo. Many others within the organization have helped me all these years. People like Rosemary Teobaldi, Tom Holy, Scotty Emeritt, who work so hard behind the scenes and never get enough credit. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to all of you who work to put these games together, who put these teams together, and keep the team healthy and going strong. Pat Brisson, thank you for your guidance during the last years of my career. You had big shoes to fill, and you did so gracefully. <laughs> to, the Toronto uh, to the Toronto Maple Leafs and Pittsburgh Penguins, thank you for the opportunities I had with each of your organizations and cities. I will forever be grateful for the experience I had. I'm getting to the end, I think. I'm almost there. <laughs> when I married my wife, I was embraced by her family. They had great, been great sources of support and have helped me so much with our boys, especially when I was on the road. Knowing Christina had, had them close by gave me comfort. My sister and brother-in-law even lived next door to us and we'd had spent countless days, nights together, laughing and watching our kids grow up together. Thank you to the Alvernaz family and Ohm families for all your support over the years. I love you. <laughs> to my sons, Landon, Brody, Jagger, and Caleb. I remember the day each of you was born, and I felt loved I'd never known before. From that day forward, I knew I was going to do everything I could to be a good dad and to show how 
you guys to be good men. And I prayed that I could play long enough so you'd remember watching me. Don't be stealing the show again. None of this today matters without your support and love. I'm so proud of you, of the young men you are becoming, and the empathy and kindness you show to others. I wasn't the dad that could coach or go on field trips, so there are countless events I missed, concerts, plays, hockey, and baseball games. You never complained, but instead asked to come to my games, my practices, probably just to go in the locker room and grab some Gatorade and <laughs> bubble gum. You're su you supported me and you cheered me on every single day, and now it's my turn to do that for you. I've been given a chance to be part of your lives in a way that I wasn't able to while I was playing, going to tournaments, driving you to and from practices, even coaching Jaggers, Jaggers team who are in playoffs right now. Shout out to the Junior Panthers 12 U. I love you boys so very much and I'm looking forward to supporting your dreams and I'll always be your biggest fan. even if it embarrasses you a little bit. I hope that you can be proud of me and maybe even take my advice in your own hockey games. This next part will have to be shorter than it deserves, or I'd end up being a puddle up here. Christina. You are my everything, my best friend. Because of your love and support, I had the career that, that was allowed to take priority at times and have a family life that I could never have dreamed of. Now that I'm around more, I understand how much effort it takes to run our home of four. Make that five, boys. <laughs> I now understand why you'd get mad at me when I come home from the road and throw out all the rules so I could play, forget bedtimes, turn the house upside down. I really don't know what I did to deserve someone like you. You've seen me at my best, you've seen me at my worst, and you've loved and supported me through it all. You've taught me how to have more courage to love harder, to always believe in myself, and to accept that we will always have lots of animals. <laughs> and you make me laugh uh, daily. Ooh, almost threw it. In our wedding vows, we said that we were two that became one. So when you look up at that jersey, I pray that you know how much of your hard work and sacrifice it took for this to be possible. Thank you for choosing me to be your line mate for life. I hope that I can sh now show you the support and love that you showed me throughout my career. To the game. You have fed my soul since that very first lap around the old beat up rink in Anarud. It was love at first stride. Thank you, hockey, for the lessons, the laughs, the tears. You let me live out my dreams. And to the San Jose Sharks, it was in this very rink I grew from a boy with stars in his eyes to a man, a husband, 
and then a father. This will always be home to me. Thank you for this honor of a lifetime.